Home to the big stories, this is Plus TV Africa, and you're watching Tea Time, your favorite entertainment news program. Hello there and welcome. I'm Takumbo Taiwo, and I'm here with the usually elegant Elsie Godwin and the usually irrepressible Ife Oshunkeye. Hi, guys. Hi. What's Why up? are you so predictable with this? Hi, guys. Okay, so what should I have said? I mean, you had the I English, thought you were going you to speak English a master. little bit of Spanish. Hola, mm -hmm. como esta? Okay. Muy Hola, bien, gracias. Como esta? That's it, Muy you bien, sound. Gracias. <laughs> Elsie, English 101 or Spanish 101. Good Whatever. heavens. If it has gone all quiet, I think if he's it. just looking at us like. I mean, look at them, son. I knew he was going to. <laughs> you know, you know, take it, chop it, chop it, chop it. Oh, he's so slow on this one. Uh, anyway, usual. What's new? Did you find anything? I saw something on YC. Okay. That I don't know if I can say on air, but there was a shade on him. But the girl Oops. has come out to say Oops. that she was just trying to um, get retweets and all that. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Don't let me go into detail. So <laughs> there's this argument on Twitter <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. that Fowls is the new fella of our time. Yeah, because I saw a tweet that was saying that being fella is not about smoking weed and chasing mm -hmm. girls and then Absolutely. wearing the whole yeah. fella vibe um, clothes. Mm -hmm. It's actually being what he his legacy is about, yeah. you know. So and Faust has been doing a lot of that. I mean, this song he drops today, right? Yeah. Um, it's something. It's something. Three years. Have you had a three years to, holiday? Have you had a chance to listen year? to it? Yes, yeah. I have. Okay, brilliant. I'm still one that is it. late. Sorry. Wow. I, I yeah, still have seen it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, Faust is doing a lot. He's yeah. just saying we can't keep so, uh, he, we can't keep keeping quiet and then mm -hmm. tolerating them and hoping for a change. But it's it expected, happen. considering yeah. the fact that it's from a legal background. Bad, can, exactly. Yeah. All right, uh, on to today's um, edition of the program. We have a studio guest, and it's time for an intro. Now, he's, a Ni he's Nigeria's uh, number one radio host for playing classic soul, new soul, gospel, and smooth jazz. Is it any wonder he's the director of music where he currently works? He's also the CEO of Shazam Records and, might I add, uh, dot com productions, isn't it? And also, he's a major Arsenal fan. He's a notable compare and has interviewed some of the world's most famous music stars, including 112, Jennifer Lopez, Tyrese, Deborah Cox, Chaka Khan, TLC, Faith Evans, Angelic Kidjo, Need I Go On, American saxophonist Gerald Albright, and so much more. With almost 12,000 followers on social media, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce Smooth FM's radio personality, the brilliant Bola Shonola, popularly known as the Genie. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Welcome to the show. What an intro. What an intro. Mm, I mean, coming from an OAP, your head should be spinning. Yes, I sh it should be spinning. Is yes, it, it spinning? is spinning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's start with this OAP thing, since uh, my colleague has just um, said that, because I know... Um, I don't know if it's an aversion that you have towards, you know, being called an OAP, because I think one interview I saw, you said, you know, some people don't even have personalities, you know. Absolutely. So I thought maybe you don't like being called that as well because you prefer other names. I just wanted you to sort of elaborate a little bit more on your aversion towards being called an OAP. Well, I, I think I think that um, it's not an industry standard. I think it's a Nigerian thing. Okay. Um, industry standards as per broadcasters. Mm -hmm. um, the, the acronym OAP, which is popular in the UK, old age means pensioner. old age pensioners. Okay. Right. And I'm not one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so you usually take offense then when they call you an OAP. No, mm. I'd rather be called a radio host. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So since we're talking about things you like and things you don't like, you also do not like the um, genre of alternative music. You don't like. To um, you, there's nothing like alternative music, correct me? If I'm yes, I, I don't... You, you see, the thing is, when you say alternative music, alternative to what? Mm -hmm. That's the question, question I ask. Yeah. Right? If you're doing soul music, it's soul. If you're doing jazz, it's jazz. If you're doing pop, it's pop. Alternative music, as far as I can remember, is rock music. Uh. So when you say you're doing alternative music, it's got to be rock. And you say, I do alternative music, but I'm a soul singer. I say, no, you're it doesn't a little make bit sense. confused there. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that's why that's why the aversion to that particular genre that's been created, you know, by people. Okay. And are there any other dislikes? Because we've talked about your dislike towards the OAP and then the alternate music. Anything else that um, um, you've got I've, a lot? I've got <laughs> you sure don't like it, Judah. 
I sure don't like intruders. intruders. We're going to so talk about that talk before. About no, that. Let, before you even, let's see if there are any other be, before we even talk about um, that. I, I think I think at the moment I I don't I I hate lawlessness. Okay. Um, and I think Lagos at the moment is about one of the most lawless places to stay at the moment. Sure. Yes. Um, laws are not obeyed. Um, people tend to do what they like, most especially on the roads. Mm -hmm. uh, There's people a lot drive, of road yeah. rage. They're, apart from road rage, mm -hmm. uh, I think we're probably even uh, panning towards anarchy at some point. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about driving on the roads, you have people who drive against traffic, you have the police do it, soldiers do it, the Air Force do it, everyone's doing it. You know, we, we might as well make it law that everyone can do what they like on the roads and just, you know, bend the law, uh, road rules and all of that. That actually gets me, and sometimes I think I get high blood pressure from that. Oh, my day. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you're the, correct me, director of music or head of music at um, uh, Smooth Ever. They both mean the same thing to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so <laughs> you are, I think you're in the right, um, you are the right person to speak about this. What do you think is happening with payola? And is it uh, really killing the industry? Well, um, payola. Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't, we don't, we, it's not in our dictionary at Smooth. Um, if your music, music is good, mm -hmm. we'll play it. As long as it fits into the genre of music that we play, which is soul, jazz, gospel, uh, Nigerian soul, um, reggae, uh, uh, you know, and, and all of that. But I know that it seems to be a popular thing amongst um, some radio stations. Um, some people frown at it and... You know, it, it's funny. It's funny you mention that because when people come to us, we play their music. Um, when they're having things to do, they don't invite us. And I'm like, we play your music. Why don't you invite us to your? We now find out that those who are playing the payola mm -hmm. are the ones that are invited as well. So sometimes I think maybe we should take it up. No, mm -hmm. should... <laughs> no. But I, I think I think um, it, it's something that's going to be difficult to stamp out in the industry. Um, I think record companies encourage it as well because they want the artists to be played. I think it's something, it's not only here, I think it's even down abroad as well, where some record companies would go out and put money into pushing their artists as well. I don't see anything wrong in that, but when radio stations are collecting money from artists who are struggling mm -hmm. to pay for studio time and all that, then I think it's a problem. Okay. okay. All right, so in all sincerity, would you say radio stations in Nigeria practice professionalism? Um, <laughs> maybe some people are going to come from my head on that one. Um, I think there are a lot of people who have stumbled into the profession, um, maybe because they've got a voice, but some people have not actually learned the rudiments of broadcasting, um, uh, which, which is a bit of a worry for me. Um, some people have someone just open the mic and say, oh, tell me how your day was. I mean, who wants to know how someone's day was? Mm -hmm. It's that person's personal, what's it called? So. Um, people come unprepared on radio. Um, people don't lack content on the radio as well. A lot of radio stations um, have that kind of problem. And then there are a lot of radio owners who are not broadcasters, so they do not know what it takes to run a radio station the way it should be run. Okay, all right, uh, time for a break. When we return, our studio guest, Smooth FM's radio show host, popularly called The Genie, will be telling us more. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> You're watching Plus TV Africa and this is Tea Time. I loved the energy when I came in here. It oh, was okay. so positive. I was like, I can't, I can live here. My real names are Akbofio Fubo, Akbolo Bome Mere. I think my father is a comedian because most times when he calls me, he's like, yo, make sure you use condom, you know them girls out there. <laughs> okay. So are you telling me I should have shot my shots? If you have a younger brother. Age is so nothing but a number. Beautiful. What? I'm a vampire. <laughs> I believe in equal rights for okay. women. Mm -hmm. And I also believe that a man is the head of the house. So okay. we need to draw our limits somewhere. I feel so good. Now can I do my jam now? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back. You're watching Tea Time right here on Plus TV Africa. Up next is a continuation of our conversation with popular on-air personality, even though he doesn't like to be called that. Yes, the genie. Yes. Okay, so um, I have a question to ask, but before I do, um, if Fair wants to ask his own question. Okay, so um, still speaking on professional, 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 professionalism. professionalism. Hey! <laughs> still speaking on professionalism. Um, you, you could be a rapper like... Pro, pro, pro. Yeah, uh, okay. He is a rapper. Uh, uh, d -d 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 <laughs> okay, so still speaking on professionalism. Um, when you tune into radio stations these days, all you hear is accent, accent. Is that a criteria for being a radio presenter in Nigeria now? Or can't we still come out? Like someone like me with my natural Nigerian accent, can't I be a radio presenter? When I hear that, I want to pull my hair out. <laughs> um, I, I, I find that some people say it's a, an acquired accent. Uh, some people have not even been out of Nigeria and they have this accent. I'm not wondering why. Do you want to sound... You see, that's the thing with personalities. When you have an acquired accent, you've already lost your personality. Yes. So people don't know who you are. Right? But when you are who you are, then your personality will shine through. Mm -hmm. That's the way it is. So those who are doing that... Some people say, oh, being on radio is like acting. I don't think so. Um, I think when you are connecting with your listeners, it's like, it's like those, some people, they come in and they start talking. And I tell some of, some, some of the younger ones come and say, listen, there's a difference between talking to your listener and talking at your yeah, listener. Because when you talk at your listener, you lose them. When you talk to them, it's like you're connecting with different lot. people. And they feel like, oh, he's talking to me or she's talking to me. You understand? But with a quiet accent, I think a lot of people need to lose it, and that's the only way they can gain their personalities. They are OAPs, maybe, or they can no, 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 I don't know. But <laughs> well, it seems a lot of radio stations seem to um, only employ people that just returnees, people that just came no, back from not London. Not necessarily. America. Most, no, listen to radio stations no, in Nigeria. I'm you just find saying, out that most not presenters. No, no, they are not necessarily um, returnees, they exactly. just have an accent. Really? So, yeah. some, some are returnees. Most of them are returnees. Um, some are returnees. How, however, um, a lot of people have. I think when the likes of my good old buddy Dan first of us came and it was on one of the happening radio stations, I think they're still happening now, um, he, he, he came up with a style that wowed everyone and all of that. But I think a lot of listeners have become a lot more sophisticated now. So if you come up with an accent, nobody really gives mm -hmm. you know, a hoot about that. But um, I just feel like, like I said earlier on, lose the accent and gain your personality. That's the only way you're going to get known. You're going to get known for all these accents, but mm -hmm. the moment you... Your become, personality, you, like you said, comes, shines yeah, it through. Comes, it shines through. Then mm -hmm. people know who you are. Okay. I mean, I have other friends, uh, Tintin. Tintin goes, no fake accent, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Give it to you as it is. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, yes. yeah. Okay, so I wanted to ask, you know, regarding, because we talked about this earlier, but I thought, you know, we'll save it for later, regarding the um, intruder that you had, you know. So this is something that we Ooh. probably um, sh need some clarification on if at the time, you know, you didn't speak about it then. So I just thought, okay, for the, anyone who is not aware, perhaps you can retell the story uh, once again, because this must have been traumatic, to say the least. It, it was a harrowing experience, and... Sometimes you wake up in the morning, you never know what you're going to get. But sometimes they say, when life throws you lemons, you make, you make lemonade, lemonade mm -hmm. and all of that. But what was thrown at me that day was um, a bit of horror. Um, I just finished my show on the radio and ran about uh, 9 o'clock. So I got home for about 10. And I wanted to do some laundry, so I went to the kitchen, put some clothes in the washing machine, boom. And then had, when it washes, then I put it in the dryer, dry and then iron for a later date. And um, I went back up to my room, and then right about 5.30 in the morning, I came back down, and I went into the kitchen. But something within me said something wasn't right. And I kept on thinking, what isn't right? And I stood there, and before I knew what was happening, I felt someone's fist oh in my, my side. Oh my God. And as soon as the person's fist left my side, I turned and I saw the guy run away. And I thought, what kind of joke is that? I wasn't even wearing a shirt, I was just wearing shorts. And a few seconds later, I felt something running down my side. 
And I put my hands on my side, like, what was that? I found out it was blood, I found out it had been stabbed. And I was the only one in the house, and I was thinking, okay, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Um, I went to the boys' quarters and um, called on a chap who's also in the industry, Silver Sadie, God bless him. And he ran out of his, out of his um, room, came out to me and said what was going on, and I told him, and we were trying to see how we were going to get to the hospital. And um, he said, how do we stop this breathing? Because the moment you breathe in and out, the blood keeps on gushing wow. out of, you know, kept on gushing out of my side. I was feeling very thirsty. I, was, I wanted water and all of that, but there wasn't water at the time. I said, look, let's just stop this bleeding. So we took the car cover and we wrapped it around my waist and I sat in the car and then drove to the hospital bleeding. Wow. Um, when I got there, they were asking for money and I was like, listen, no one plans for this kind of things. Let's just see what you can do. How can you help me? And the doctor came and said, no, let's first stitch the, the stab wound and then they stitched it up and then they gave me some drugs and said, okay, take this, come back in an hour. And another doctor said, no, 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 no. He needs to be referred to another hospital. So I thought, okay, where should I be referred to? And they mentioned the hospital and um, we said, okay, where is it? They told us and then we drove down there. And we got there, you know, they were asked, also talking about who's going to pay for this, blah, 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 and all that. I couldn't even say a word because I was really, really fucked out. And um, eventually a friend of mine, close friend of mine, Tunde Ajije, a very great guy, came and said, what's going on, this and that, and blah, blah, blah. They mentioned money. And how much? They said, 750,000 naira. And he said, okay, what's your account details? And he wired half of the money to them there and then. I said, listen, my friend must not die. And um, they came and said, oh, stitch the, who stitched the stab one? I said, well, the hospital that referred me here. I said, no, they shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. And they kept on removing the stitches again. Yeah. And I was in absolute pain. Oh. Anyway, I'd lost so much blood, they had to, and then I was bleeding inside as well. So I had to put a tube in my side to drain all the blood out. And then they said, okay, we need to operate, but you've lost so much blood, we can't operate you without giving you blood. So they said, okay, how much blood are we going to give? They said, okay, let's give him a pint first. So they brought the pint, mm -hmm. blood in there, drip in there, tube in there. I just felt like, you know, all kind of parts and wires and what's it called. And then they gave me the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, five pints of blood. Whoa. Wow. And then they went me into the theater to have the operation done. So um, I had to cut me open, take out my organs, stitch my back muscles with the torn, put my organs back in, and stitch, stitch me back up. Whoa. Wow. Okay, so what did you story. learn from this experience? <laughs> well, before, no, before we talk about yeah. the learning, like, okay. Has there been any investigation to find out why this happened? Yeah, because where this, from this story, from? it sounds like um, you were a target. Someone came for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, do you know, can we hold on to that thought? Um, because we need to go on a break. When we come back, uh, he'll be able to answer uh, those questions right after this. That's when Tea Time on Plus TV Africa returns. <laughs> You're watching Plus TV Africa and this is Tea Time. I loved the energy when I came in here. It oh, was okay. so positive. I was like, I can't, I can live here. My real names are Akbofio Fubo, Akbolo Bome Mere. I think my father is a comedian because most times when he calls me, he's like, yo, make sure you use condom, you know them girls out there. <laughs> okay. So are you telling me I should have shot my shots? If you have a younger brother. Age is so nothing but a number. Beautiful. What? I'm a vampire. <laughs> I believe in equal rights for okay. women. Mm -hmm. And I also believe that a man is the head of the house. So okay. we need to draw our limits somewhere. I feel so good. I can I do my jam now? Yeah, you can. <laughs> Welcome back. It's still tea time right here on Plus TV Africa. And we're swiftly moving on in our conversation with vocal uh, radio personality with Smooth FM, the genie. Yes, that was quite a harrowing experience, wasn't it? And mm. um, before the break, if you were asking him uh, yeah, something. I, from the 
story you just shared with us, um, it sounded like somebody came for you in particular. Mm. Is that the case or it was just a coincidence? Or, or was it random? Uh, was it just random? I wouldn't say it was random. Um, we, we have a, a, a very clear idea of who it was. Um, and investigations are going on, mm -hmm. and the net has been, uh, you know, the net is covering, you know, catching up with him, basically. Hopefully before, before long, um, you'll hear about what the investigations have come up with. So I, I don't want to say much about that on live TV, but okay. we, know, we know who it is. But you were a target. Yes. Okay. Wow. Wow. So like I was saying earlier on, what have you learned from this experience? I think one thing that stood out for me was I think I didn't place any value on anything anymore. I was like, you know what? That's nothing means anything. You mean on material stuff? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Nothing meant anything to me. I just felt like, you know what? It's all vanity. Like, mm -hmm. it's all said, but it's okay. Take it. It doesn't mean anything to me. Okay. You guys know right. my line. Curiosity kills the cart. <laughs> I'm so, so curious now. Why would anyone want to target you? That is, um, it's still a mystery. Um, when he's caught her, I'm sure. We'll find out. We'll find out. Okay. So I you say. don't have any clue as to why no. he okay. came for you? No. All right. I don't want to say end the show without, you know, delving into uh, a little bit of politics since that's the, it's the election year. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you're very vocal and you'll probably have some strong views on that as oh, well. Most, most definitely. <laughs> so most definitely. I don't even know where to start because there's so much to talk about, you know. So many other celebrities have come out to, you know, talk about, you know, youth and politics, you know. And people have talked about women and politics and... You, let me just ask for a general overview of what you think the state of politics in Nigeria is before we even talk about, you know, the elections proper. I think um, for so many years the Taps have been in power. I think they've taken over and those who are educated, um, I don't think they trusted the military in 1979 that much to get into politics. And that mistrust led into the Taps coming in. Um, the Taps are the ones who are dictating how we live our lives, mm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, also, we have what I call, I think the, stage, the nation will move forward the moment we get out of the psyche of putting the cart before the horse, um, and that's in terms of leadership. Uh, if we go back to 1979, no disrespect to the late um, Elijah Shev Shagari, was a great, great two teacher, and his vice was Dr., the late Dr. Alex Ekwame of blessed memory who have three degrees in architectural law and engineering, and being a vice. You see, so if you forward to 2019, you have President uh, Buhari, whose qualifications coming out of the military school is the equivalent of a diploma, and his vice is a professor of law. It just rings of 1979 to me. Now you have uh, Mr. Bubaka uh, Atiku, mm -hmm who wants to unseat the incumbent, he's also a diploma holder. And his vice seems more qualified than him. So it's putting the cart before the horse. And until we get out of that psyche, we're not going to go anywhere. That's my own summation of things. So um, are you saying we do, not have un uh, we, don't, we do not have qualified leaders? I think our problem has always been leadership. It has always been leadership. Um, and the moment we, our problems are not unique to Nigeria although we tend to be living in an alternate reality mm -hmm. from the rest of the world because we don't behave like the rest of the world. But um, I'd love to see a situation where things will change. We're talking about change, but how we're going to make that change is something that I'm still trying to find. I'm just trying to see where that's going to happen. Um, elections in Nigeria, uh, I don't know. Like I said, we ha we're in a different alternate reality to the rest of the world. So the way we do things are different. I've got friends from, from Ghana, Uganda, Kenya, South Africa, and they always ask me, why are Nigerians like this? You know, and I can't answer the question. But I don't know. I mean, we need to work hard. I, I don't like this. Some Nigerians would say, oh, it will be better, or it is well. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like that, because it's only going to be well when you make it well. Mm -hmm. If you fold your arms and you say it is well, it's not going to be well. I say God will do it. God's not going to come down and do nothing for you until you shift in the work. And that's just my own. Okay. Final um, questions, anyone? Okay. Um, 
I'm going to infuse two questions in one. Okay. Now, you love soul. Yes, I do. And um, recently, the queen of soul passed away, Aretha Franklin. How did you feel when she died? I think Aretha was one of a kind. There will never be another Aretha. I think she, she had a lot of influence on a lot of singers of today. And um, she was also an activist as well, mm -hmm. you know, and she had messages that she gave to people. And that's a problem with us here as well. A lot of our artists don't have messages to give out to the people. It's all about beats and no message. And that's why I, as a person, as head of music of Smooth FM, have decided to veer away from that kind of music where there's no message. Right and stick with the music, whether it's made and there's intelligence to be taken out of it. All right, so well, that was going to be my second question because um, music content these days are very shallow. So I want to know your top three musicians. Globally, it could be in Nigeria, it could be globally. Your what, top what, three what I'll musicians. do is I'll do global, I'll do Nigerian. Okay. Uh, Nigerian, I, I love Bess, I love Asha. Um, and who's the third one? Who would I put as the third? I love Maka. Okay, okay. Yes. great. Then global. globally. Uh, globally, I'd say Will Downing, I'd say um, Anita Bacon, as much as she's retired from the music industry. And who would be the third one? Who would be the third one? A bit jazz artist, Dave Collins. All right, we're out of time. That's where we're going to wrap up on Tea Time this afternoon. But we're back on Monday morning uh, for the latest entertainment headlines. Until then, big ups to my colleagues, Ife and Elsie. I also have to thank the all inclusive and entire production team. And how can I forget our studio guest, radio personality, very well known as the Genie? Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you very much. I'm Token Portai. We're saying thanks for watching and have yourself a great weekend. Thank you.